Let's take a look at OGT Level Manager, Outlaw Game Tools Level Manager. When you unpack the zip file, uh, you should have something like this. This is the folder that I unpacked. Uh, there's an audio folder, there's an images folder, and then there's a bunch of Lua files here, just like normal. And these are storyboard files. Here's Here's play, uh, here's one called choose level, and I'll show you those in just a moment. But let's go ahead and take a look at main first, because main really doesn't do anything. Uh, this is all there is to it. Basically, I'm just uh, loading it up and then doing a storyboard go to scene and going to choose level. Now, of course, in a real game, you're probably going to want to go to a main menu first. And then from the main menu, you'll end up going to uh, some kind of choose level file. Now, of course, as I just showed you, my choose level file is called choose level.lua. Yours could be something different, doesn't really matter. So in here, this is just a storyboard scene file. You can see the storyboard stuff up here at the top. And then all of the, you know, the will enter scene and the enter scene and all this kind of stuff. And the event listeners down at the bottom. I only made three changes to this. I made three changes to this. Um, and it makes it work for choosing a level. Right here, local LM equals re require OGT underscore level manager. So I'm including the level manager library itself right here. And we're setting it to a local variable called LM. So down in here in create scene, I just do LM dot init. And then I pass in the name of the dis display group that we want all of our graphics to be put into. And of course, if you're using storyboard, um, it's going to be called group unless you change that. So we're just passing that into LM init. The only other thing I added into this file was uh, here inside of uh, scene, did exit scene. I put in storyboard dot remove all. And that's because, without getting too deeply into storyboard, when you go from one storyboard scene to another, if it doesn't think that it needs to load some things up again because they're already in memory, um, it won't. Which means that variables that you think should be getting reset don't get reset. So this is just a, a shortcut to say, I want to make sure that when I come into a scene, I'm coming in fresh each time. So those are the three things that I changed in this blank storyboard file. That's all I had to do to get this let's run this this is it this is the sample project it comes in here uh, just like this we've got a, a big old button over the side here that we can uh, go previous and next so we can page through all of these we have uh, one level that we can get to i can click on these i'm clicking and nothing happens because they are locked uh, but this one i can go ahead and click that and so this would send us off to the play screen where you would actually play your game in this case i just want to be able to set how many stars we earned on this level so let's just say this is a first level so it's pretty easy and we earned three stars so that's going to send us directly back to our choose level screen and you can see that now level one has three stars and level two is unlocked and we can choose that to play. So how did we set the stars and how did we unlock the next level? Okay, th this is what's really cool. Over here in play.lua, which is where I, where I sent us to, um, there's a bunch of code in here and here's the, here's the code that shows the stuff on the screen uh, which we could click on and so on. But the interesting stuff is after we clicked on one of those numbers see we can we here we have uh zero one two and three just with display new text in each one of those i added a property to each of those called num stars and for zero i it equals zero and for the one display object num stars equals one and two for two and so on that way when i click one i can i can pull it out of there to see which one did i actually click on so each of those goes up to this function called num stars tapped Okay, normal stuff so far. Here in num stars tapped, just take a look at this here. First, I grab the number of stars, and that's at event.target.num stars. And then all I have to do to set the number of stars for that level that we're on is call lm.update stars. Now, the lm, I got that from right back up here, just like the last file. I went ahead and required, loaded up the level manager file itself. So lm.update stars, and I pass in the number of stars, and it sets the number of stars and saves that in a file so that the next time we go into the choose level or even quit the game and load it up again, the correct number of stars will be there for each level. So that's how we updated the stars. How did we unlock the next level? Well, you probably just already looked down here, and I'm showing that if the uh, num stars is greater than zero, 
then go ahead and unlock the next level. And to do that, you just call lm.unlocknextlevel, and that's all there is to it. So if we run back over to Chrono Simulator, and we go into level two, and we play level two, and we got two stars on that one, now we can see there's still the three stars on number one, there's two stars on number two, and now level three is unlocked and ready to go. That's the coolest thing about OGT Level Manager is how easy it is to incorporate into your program. But there's a, even a cooler thing almost, and that is how you can how you can change things because we had uh, two rows of four, and now this is the OGT Level Manager file itself. And right up here at the top, there's a bunch of variables. And here we have some information about the grid. We've got total levels. There's 30 total levels. Number of columns is four. Number of rows is two. Now, if we want to go with... Uh, uh, three and three we can set it like this save that and now we've got three and three and it works just like before uh, maybe we want to uh, tighten it up a little bit so there's a uh, spacing between the columns there's spacing between the rows and now we get something that looks like this and it still works exactly the same way as it did before let's go ahead and add just a little bit in there and maybe we have Maybe we have um, something, a title up at the top that needs to be uh, seen more. We can actually drop the entire grid down. Uh, so if we want to change the vertical offset, and let's say let's drop it down uh, 30 pixels. And now you can see we're right down here at the, at the bottom of the screen. And if we wanted to go left, maybe we want to have it in the, in the lower left corner. Um, left is going to be a negative, of course. And let's say... Um, a hundred. I'm not sure if that'll if that'll work or not. Yeah, there we go. So we're over in the lower left corner. We could we could squish it all the way over there if we wanted. One thing you're going to have to take into account is uh, you, if if you're doing paging. Once we move over here, now you're going to have an arrow there. But that's an implementation detail that you can uh, mess with yourself. So while you can do while you can tweak everything, sometimes it's not a good idea to tweak things completely. So let's go ahead and set the grid back to the center. All right, and maybe we don't use stars in our uh, in our game. A lot of, a lot of games do, but not everything. So I'm going to take up back up here in the images section, take star image and set it to nil. Save that, and now we have the same thing going on, uh, but we don't have any stars to mess with. Okay, this sample game uses stars. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back there. And if you look over here, some of the other things you can tweak. You can see levels one, two, and three, but if it's if it's locked, you don't actually see the number. Uh, we can change that also. So down here under the font section, show text when locked. We have it set to false. Let's just set that to true. Run this, and now you can see the num well. You can't really see the numbers. Well, if the lock was a little lower, you could. Well, you can go right down here to the lock image, the lock offset X and Y, and let's uh, set that down uh, 20 pixels. And you still got the lock on there, but it's like locking the number instead of blocking the number. So you can see you can you can do lots of uh, lots of tweaking, lots of tweaking of just for the fun of it. Let's go ahead and change this here. And now we've got a different thing here, and we probably want that number up a little higher. See the the numbers as a default show up right in the center of the graphic. Well, in this case, we want it probably centered in this top part not including the bottom part. So we can just go here to the font uh, level num text X and Y offset and we'll go up which will be a negative value up 20 pixels. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hide the text when locked and put the lock back up higher. In fact we probably want it uh, minus 20 also. Let's give this a shot here. And minus 20 is a little bit too much probably, but you can see how this works with just uh, a little bit of tweaking of these variables. You can uh, change all of this stuff all around and maybe, let's see, maybe you only want, uh, you want one row, you want uh, four columns. Let's go with that one. There we go. Working just like before. One star on that one, and now level four is unlocked for us.